The first jig is a feather board, and it's not really shop made, so it's not technically a jig, but it works great. And what it does is you set it here, magnets turn on, it's made by MagSwitch, magnets, and uh, it doesn't move. It's really nice. I mean, you can see the bandsaw moving. It's really sturdy. So you can set your fence to your depth that you want and you can just run it through and this helps keep pressure on the board against the blade and the fence. Great jig, really recommend it. It's really good for the bandsaw, the table saw, and the joiner even. So highly recommend this jig. So this next jig is a milling jig. Uh, I went and grabbed a piece of firewood that I have and this jig is super simple. Basically all it is is giving us one clean reference face so that we can use that one clean reference face to square up and mill out the rest of the pieces out of this log. It's a very simple jig, two triangles and two flat pieces. <laughs> Basically all we're gonna do for setup, it's very simple. We're gonna take, you can see a bunch of screw holes in the back here. We're going to screw into the piece of wood. It doesn't matter where into the piece of wood, as long as it's a good grab and the piece is not gonna move while your blade is cutting through it. Because if that happens, you're in deep trouble. So, just get that in there. Oh, see? See this swap we have here? We don't want that. So we're actually gonna take that out. We're gonna redo this in another spot because we don't want that thing lifting off the ground. We want it to stay square the whole time. That's good. We got a square piece, staying flat. Now we can run it through the bandsaw and take off our first square reference piece. So now we've got two flat faces, which is important because now I can use the fence and the table to cut some little mini slabs off of this, which is awesome. I can utilize what is essentially a piece of junk wood from my fire wood pile and turn it into something usable. The reason that jig is so helpful is because if I was trying to push this through while it's round, you see how tippy that is? it grabs the wrong way, it's gonna pull this thing over, it's very dangerous. And you just don't want to do this operation without a jig like that on your bandsaw in your shop. So the next jig is for making bow ties. They're kind of a staple in this shop and this little jig will help you make them quickly and repeatably, and it's just, couldn't be easier to make. <laughs> just a piece of half inch plywood. It's shaped like an L, and then it has a rectangle in here that's skewed at nine degrees. Very simple, easy to make, quick to cut out. I did it on a miter saw or something. I don't, actually, I think I drew it out and cut it out on the bandsaw because I was using it on the bandsaw, so. Uh, very simple, very easy to make, and let me show you how it works. You take your piece of stock. This is a four and a quarter inch long piece by one and a half inches. So you can see here I made a mark for my center line. What we're gonna do is cut, push the piece through until the blade comes to center, flip it over, push it through again until the blade meets that first cut, and then we're gonna flip it over the top and do the same thing. And what you're gonna end up with is a perfect bow tie. And this is my dovetail jig. It's a 1-8 jig, which I think is kind of the standard for hardwoods, but basically what that means is for every eight inches of run, it rises one inch. Easy to figure that out. So that's how you can set your cut. I did this an inch up, and then I went two inches up here and eight inches over and cut a line between them on the bandsaw, and then I cleaned it up on the edge sander. But all you do is you set your piece of wood in there, and this allows you to <clears throat> make a nice, clean tail. This will only get your tails on this jig. Uh, it'll get you a nice clean tail and it's perfectly symmetrical on both sides and front and back. So it's really nice jig, really simple to make. It's basically the same as the bow tie jig, but flipped over the other way. It does the same exact thing.
next jig is the jig I call the seat back duplicator. So I have a line of furniture and this is the back to the seat that you lean your back on. So we cut this part on the CNC and it comes off looking like this. The problem that we had to solve was how to get this same radius that's on the inside to the outside. So we made this jig, which is essentially just a fence with the same radius here. So what happens is, is we put this piece here and run it along this, following that, and then the blade cuts the same radius on the outside. And this not only makes the radius repeatable, but it also makes it really quick and really safe. And we can make a bunch of these back cuts in an hour, we'll probably do 40 of these. I love the bandsaw. It's my favorite tool in the shop, really. And I love jigs. It's a really great sign of a person who's thinking about the next steps in their woodworking and how they're gonna make their projects go smoother, quicker, safer, and more repeatable. Jigs are great. They can help you every day in the shop. And those are the ones that I use the most. If you have any jigs that you use in your shop, let me know down below in the comments. I'd love to hear about them. And again, I'd like to say thank you for watching.